Welcome on board. I'm back with another bug boost converter. This time using a modern tiny chip. This chip from Texas Instruments. Just look at how small the board is. Compare it with the size of my pen. Let me show you the board closely. It's a two layer PCB board and the bottom layer is a solid ground plane, which I always prefer for better performance and noise reduction. The input voltage range from these two pads is 3 to 15 volts and the output from these two pads is fixed at 5 volts, capable of delivering up to 1 amp continuously. To solder this board, especially the tiny controller chip, you will need a microscope, which is quite affordable these days. If you like to modify the design, I have uploaded the original schematic and PCB files to my Altium 365 cloud space. Just follow this link in the YouTube video description and sign up on the Altium website. Then download the entire project for free from this link. All right, without further delay, let's move on and take a closer look at the schematic and PCB layout. So here is the home page of my Altium 365 cloud space and this is the latest project. But why do I use this? What's in it for me? Altium 365 has many features but one stands out. It makes teamwork easy, especially for complex PCB projects. Imagine a team where one person works on the power supply. Another designs the digital circuits and someone else handles the RF parts such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Another team member creates the bill of materials and buys the components. And finally, one teammate prepares the component libraries. If you use the traditional method, I mean the email, to exchange project files and comments, things will get messy. It leads to lots of attachments, misunderstandings, errors, and frustration. This will delay your project, stress the team members, and affect the company's income and reputation. But with Altium 365, the whole team works on a secure cloud platform. Everyone can leave comments, apply edits, update component values, and more, all in one place. If you have worked on a complex PCB project, I'm sure now you feel the difference. So I won't explain more, just follow this link and try it yourself. Here is the latest project. When I double click, the project documents open right away. Here is the schematic document. This one is the PCB layout and this one is a 3D view of the PCB board. So let's start with the schematic. The schematic doesn't look like a conventional bug boost converter. That's because this design is unique to this TI chip. And it doesn't even need an external Schottky diode, which is a nice bonus. The inductor connects pin L1 and L2. R2 and R3 are feedback resistors, so make sure they have 1% tolerance. The same applies to R4, this one. For the input capacitors C1 and C2, at least one should be placed as close as possible to the V-in pin. The input pin, I mean. That's very important. The same rule applies to the output capacitors C4 and C5. But the input side is even more critical. This LED simply indicates that the output voltage is present. So nothing special is here. Let's move on on the PCB, which is more interesting. This is a two layer PCB board and I have used a solid ground plane on the bottom layer. Let me show you. This is the bottom layer. 
These vias help create a low impedance return path for both the ground pin of the capacitors and the controller. From vias, I mean these drilling holes. I think you know what I mean. My goal with this PCB design was to keep it low cost, but there is a trade-off because the chip has tight clearance requirements and needs small vias, it can increase the manufacturing cost depending on your PCB manufacturer, especially if you follow the tiny via sizes shown in the datasheet. This is the datasheet and suggested PCB layout. Anyway, you have full access to the original schematic and PCB files. You can modify them if you like. In my first prototype, I forgot to add a strong via near the power ground pin. I'm talking about pin number 10 and this via. As a result, once I went above 250 milliamps, I started to see a voltage drop. So by adding this via here, the circuit could easily handle more current. I also recommend adding two extra vias, 0.4 millimeter diameter with 0.2 millimeter drill size, one on each side of this big via on the left and right sides. This should let you draw 5 to 600 milliamps continuously. But if you want to get the full 1 amp current, then I suggest following the recommended layout from the datasheet and ensuring a strong ground path for pin 10. There is no better way than this for a two-layer PCB. The input and output capacitors are close to the controller and the feedback path here is routed away from noisy areas and directly senses the output. This PCB is also a great opportunity to practice your micro soldering skills. Since the controller chip is from Texas Instruments, you can simulate it using the WeBench Power Designer tool. The operation mode is set to PFM and the ambient temperature is assumed to be 30 degrees C. The original inductor value was 1.5 microhenries, but I changed it to 2.2 microhenries because it is easier to find and it performs a bit better. Now I want to show you something interesting. Take a look at the suggested PCB layout here. The ground plane wrap around the circuit. The question is, is this a ground loop? I'm not a fan of this kind of layout in power converters. Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right, I prepared this test setup to test the Bakbus converter board. These two clips read the input voltage. They are connected to the multimeter. So this 15 is the input voltage. These two wires are connected to the output and also connected to the DC load. So this DC load shows the output voltage, which is five volts. At the moment, there is no load at the output. I apply 250 milliamps load to the output. Why 250? I explained in the schematic and PCB section. So there we go. Regulation is pretty good. So let me decrease this voltage, this input voltage to three, and we will see how this buck boost converter performs. So let's decrease it. Let's go to three. And there we go. It works perfectly and reliably. This is not a perfect test, but it shows us a picture of this, uh, of how this converter works. This is passed. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. We will do something else in the next video.